Hello. Well, um, today I want to talk about uh, something that I have heard quite a bit about uh, of uh, regarding Star Wars with the <clears throat> rebels and the uh, Empire. Um, big thing is the Empire were the good guys, and the it was the evil rebels who were uh, like terrorists and authoritarian like and I gotta disagree with that uh, for many reasons um, I have some stuff I've written here but also I have uh, found something that uh, uh, regarding a question that was asked on uh, Gora. Uh, I believe that's how you pronounce that name. I don't know. I've never pronounced it before, so I might have to apologize. It's that site that um, you can answer questions uh, for and uh, or ask. And um, one thing is, you know, this whole thing with the allegory of the Vietnam War in Star Wars, which apparently is only really in Return of the Jedi, in terms of the uh, original trilogy, which is where I often hear this from. Um, I'll just say uh, briefly regarding the Vietnam War, the side uh, Americans were on was uh, the side of the South Vietnamese, which we hit it on our side also was... Uh, at Australia, New Zealand, <clears throat> South Korea. Um, we had a uh, Taiwan, Cambodia, Laos. Those are just some of the countries on the side of the South Vietnam on the North Vietnam side. We there was also there was China, North Korea, Soviet Union, um, Cambodia, East Germany, Poland, Cuba, um, um, well, uh, in co in comparison, there was twelve. Countries mainly uh, for uh, you know mainly uh, involved with the Vietnam War for the North Vietnamese side and ten countries mainly for um, you know uh, the South Vietnam side and there were other countries that were, that did have support, but those are just the major ones, you know, uh, in terms of, all, uh, uh, you know, additional support. So, um, you know, I don't want to get into the whole history, but um, just from the main big picture, I'm not getting into all the other countries, because there's various countries on both sides, but, you know, uh, overall, the South Vietnam was not as, you know, didn't have as huge of a uh, overall big military defense in the sense of the North Vietnam with the Soviet Union and um, China. Yeah, I mean, South Vietnam had America and some other countries, but uh, America is the big main uh, country with South Vietnam that, you know, was often, um, was often looked at, you know, all the other countries 
that helped or usually ignored or not given as much um, attention brought to it and, you know, for various reasons. Uh, now I know that American involvement in Vietnam has always been quite controversial. I'm not going to get into what I think about that, <clears throat> whether we should have or not, because again, this is Star Wars still, but I'm trying to give some backs around what's going on. Um, what really started the Vietnam War to begin with, before America or all the other allied forces for either side of the North and South, well, the North Vietnam, North Vietnamese government wanted uh, the South Vietnamese to come together and it will be Vietnam again, but they wanted a, you know, a uh, communist uh, style of government. The uh, South Korea, or South Korea, the South Vietnamese didn't want that. They were fine with how things were, and uh, yeah, that did not, um, as time went on, that did not uh, go well, and uh, essentially the, <clears throat> the North Vietnam, the North Vietnamese, uh, went to try and have the South Vietnam Vietnamese to become, you know, communist. They didn't, you know, because the South Vietnam didn't want to be a communist state, well, or country. Eventually, everything got escalated, and then uh, they went and uh, attacked uh, various parts of South Vietnam. From everything I've uh, gathered, uh, you know, South Vietnamese did not want to be, um, you know, they didn't want to be like uh, North Vietnam. They have they became North and South for a reason, and uh, yeah, it, things just escalated and war broke out. Um, I don't want to do a complete overall history, but of it, but just the gist. So, with that in mind, um, the notion that the um, the, uh, the rebels were terrorists and were authoritarian and trying to control everything. And granted, you know, um, North Vietnam was a smaller country than, you know, South Vietnam, but they had a lot of resources, uh, and were able to, uh, you know, use what they had to go and uh, uh, you know, uh, they just did what they They had to. So, anyway, I don't want to harp on this any longer, really. But with the uh, Empire and Rebels, well, the Empire is real authoritarian, and this whole uh, uh, discussion, and, um, and they turn on those who are supposed to be under their rule, you know, in terms yeah, they are turned on to those who are supposed to be under the rule and were a prison or kill anyone who doesn't do what they say. The rebellion is uh, for returning the authoritarian dictatorship of the empire regime 
into the Republic again, and uh, as a result are fighting for freedom of um, against the Empire, because the Empire is totalitarianism, and uh, trying to be show their authority onto those that, you know, don't want it, because, you know, Emperor Palpatine got into power, and made it essentially a dictatorship, and, uh, that seemed constantly through, uh, communistic, uh, kind of regimes, um, like North Vietnam, for instance, you know, they want to impose their rule onto others. Because they feel it's the best kind of way of living, and uh, if you don't agree, well, uh, it's not going to be uh, too pretty, honestly. And, and apologies for all the kind of political kind of stuff, but it is it is important, I believe, when discussing this kind of topic. Um, so, um, you know, now I'm dealing with the, the terrorist aspect, so, you know, the re rebels are called terrorists by many who favor the Empire. And the thing is, like, people like the bad guy, like Darth Vader, like the Emperor, but the Emperor is not good. Darth Vader is not good. I mean, yes, he's Anakin Skywalker, but as Darth Vader, he does not do good things. I mean, sure, he doesn't kill his son. You know, he doesn't want to. So that is a redeeming quality of Vader. And it's also one faction as to why he's redeemed in the end. But along with this, um, with the terrorist stuff, terrorists commit acts of violence to frighten people into their, into either compliance or to cause terror. The Empire created the Death Star to terrorize any and all planets to conform with their ways of life. And if there was any sort of disagreement between a planet and their system and the Empire, the planet and all those who live there will die. The Rebellion are against such tactics and destroy the Death Star, which the Emp Emperor had... You know, which the Emperor had to become his authoritarian weapon of making people listen to him for fear of death once he got rid of the Senate in A New Hope, and that the fear will make everyone comply with the Empire uh, even more so than before. And that's important because in A New Hope, they say fear is what will make people comply client. That is what, uh, you know, terrorists do. Uh, terrorists make people frightened and scared and to, you know, do what they say or else more will come. Uh, they want to, you to conform to their way of life. Uh, same with authoritarianism. You know, now regarding Vietnam, um, this is just stuff I've interpreted. Um, after all the Vietnam stuff I've given, here's my uh, take. I say America represents the rebels <clears throat> as they're working with the Ewoks and are there to destroy and dismantle the Empire on that planet. In the galaxy, as America was attempting with communism, because that was a big thing of why America was there, was because of communism, as well as also, you know, the whole thing of <clears throat> us being attacked by them and all that. <clears throat> it does have a way wrapped with communism. You know, we don't like that. I, we don't like that as a country. That I that ideology. We don't like that. It's not, you know, to us, it's not a good one. 
you know, it's shown also time and time again it doesn't work. It's always fallen and crumbles. Um, <clears throat> the South, South Vietnamese, represented by Ewoks, due to them, you know, being native to the planet, forced moon, and then they join the rebels in defeating the Empire. The North Vietnamese represent the Empire as they've come to Endor and set up shop and destroy various parts of the Ewoks' home in order to ensure their presence presence on other worlds as the Death Star shield generator will be on the forest moon of Endor. And the Death Star will be able to go and destroy a planet that does not conform to the Empire as the North Vietnamese went and attempted to conquer uh, North or the South Vietnamese and to make them conform to communism. They wanted to be Vietnam again and uh, since negotiating such uh, a compromise was not in the decks, they uh, eventually went in and started to, to impose upon them by any means necessary. So war broke out. And, um, yeah, and I bring that up because George Lucas um, says the, like, essentially said the rebels were authoritarian. And this, uh, interview with James Cameron he had as part of this mini series that Cameron had about science fiction films and I only saw like the first episode because I'm not too uh, I'm not really big into James Cameron and uh, there's just something about him I'm not fond of <clears throat> I mean he makes good movies you know Terminator uh, Avatar the Titanic's a very well-made film. You know, he's made good movies, but I don't know, I'm just not fond of um, James Cameron. So that was a big reason I didn't keep watching um, that after one episode. But I saw a clip, and I'm like, "Where was this? And the where was the rebel? Where were the rebels ever going to?" Where were they trying to, you know, become dictators whenever and whenever they, like, liberated a planet from the Empire? Uh, from my knowledge, any such kind of battle over a planet or a place the Empire has control over like within the books, the rebels really don't want to be in charge of that planet. I mean, they might restore, it, help restore it back to how things used to be, but overall, they don't seem to really want to control it and have you know, overall say. I mean, they might have some rebels on the planet, particularly major parts of the planet that could possibly, that are crucial uh, to, if the Empire came back, that they could just take over, no problem, you know, might be so, a decent amount of rebels there, and especially after the first Death Star blew up, the rebels got a lot of support in helping taking down the Empire. And it's because of that that people say they're terrorists, but they're really not. They're rebels because they don't want to have an authoritarian type of government in charge. And honestly, uh, in a situation like that, a rebellion of any kind is likely to uh, come up. Um, so I don't know why George Lucas has said this in any documentaries or interviews or in the commentaries 
or even if he's talking about you know Vietnam in that uh, he's often referred to the North Vietnam as the good guys in that or the representation of the Ewoks and the Empire is some like the side of America and all that, that stuff of trying to impose upon North Vietnam which uh, you know was not the case but due to how news was back then a lot of things Did not make it to the airwaves, you know. People didn't, uh, you know, people weren't fond of going to war. Obviously, nobody really actually is. Um, so, with that in the air, um, it was never a popular war to begin with. So, um, I think a rebellion against the empire was always going to happen at some point. People didn't like it. They were forming an empire or a rebellion, doing what they could to try and free systems of the empire's hold. Um, and in the end of Return of the Jedi, they win. You know, the rebels win. The authoritarianism is, and the across the galaxy is gone. Um, and that's just another reason why they're not the bad guys. They're doing what they can to uh, liberate and save people from a horrible dictatorship. Um, and so now I want to read this answer that this guy made, wrote on uh, Cura. Uh, and the question is, why was the Galactic Empire considered the bad guys besides the fact that they were run by the Sith. This guy has a very good answer. He goes, well, besides being ruled by an ancient order of <clears throat> an annihilatively evil space wizards, there's a few. The Empire uh, was notably seen as xenophobic, refusing to allow any aliens to join the imperial military, let alone public office. From what I remember, the only non-human who did the impossible and climbed to the military ladder was Grand Admiral Throng. The Empire had a well-documented, oppressive-style mandating order through the galaxy. This included building weapons that could destroy planets and entire systems, one particular grotesque incident occurred when Tarkin, who later commanded the first Death Star, when peaceful protests were started in response to taxes and imperial tyrannical practices, he landed on a protest group with his personal Star Destroyer, leading the horrific demise of several hundred civilians and maiming of thousands more. And while it was a deplorable action, it effectively halted all protests in the star system. Finally, the one reason that, in my opinion, gives the Empire that extra little splash of darkness is Sidious's philosophy. To him, and therefore every person under him, believed in the maximum of the good always justify the means. Palpatine's sole goal was unified was a unified, strong, galactic conglomeration with him at the helm. However, he reached his goal, whether it be cracking down on dissident, publicly executing members of the rebellion, or blowing up an entire planet. And that sounds really uh, authoritarian and terrorist-like in my eyes. You know, I know the War of Vietnam, there's a lot of stuff of, like, you know, terrible things happen in war. People, soldiers do terrible things, but, you know, that's in every war. Even in, in World War II, soldiers on either side 
did things they would, nor would not normally do. But that's because in some instances it's hard to know who you can trust. In itself, and in the Vietnam War, it was hard for Americans once we were there to know who can you trust. And I'm sure similar instances happened with the rebellion. You know, who can you trust? Who can't you trust? And uh, this sort of confusion that happens uh, quite often in many wars. Um, that's why I mentioned the Vietnam War because it helps give a good uh, uh, foundation I think as to how this all came about and I know George Lucas you know growing up the era he did you know he wasn't fond of the Vietnam War um, uh, most in the film industry or those winning going into the film industry did not like it I also think that one reason he says uh, this Vietnam allegory is because he was supposed to direct Apocalypse Now, and uh, but he got started on Star Wars and was able to make that uh, just as it was essentially time for him to make Apocalypse Now. You know, he helped with John Milius' early stages of writing. Coppola was going to produce the film. All this was pretty much set up and it's going to happen this way. But in the end, uh, George Lucas got the deal to make Star Wars. And from then, uh, for a while, Francis Ford Coppola and George Lucas's friendship was strained for quite some time. Um, perhaps that had, that's a reason why he talks about Vietnam and Star Wars, because I don't see it the way he sees it. Um, and I think that's completely fine to see it a different way. Um, the way I explained it here, um, and you don't have to agree with me, um, but this is just why I don't see the rebels as the bad guys. I see the Empire as the bad guys, and until that moment, when he was talking to James Cameron, um, <clears throat> uh, George Lucas pretty much always said the rebels were the good guys. It was the Empire that was evil. They were authoritarian and you know, di 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 dictatorship, you know, causing terror. I'm not sure exactly why it is he, he he's. Uh, said this in that uh, show with James Cameron. Uh, could it be he's not pleased with how Disney is handling Star Wars? Maybe, but uh, I don't know how some of his comments previously went entirely, um, <clears throat> you know, support that. But, you know, uh, I don't know be interesting uh, an interesting thing for him to say all of a sudden before it, they were always the good guys now I guess the Empire is the good guys hmm it is interesting to say the least um, anyway uh, this did go on a bit uh, quite a bit longer than I expected. However, I did have an idea it was going to go on a bit. I want to do some explanation as well as read some stuff I wrote as well as this answer um, <clears throat> from the question that was asked. Um, so I thought it was very important to the topic of why the rebels are the good guys. And... Um, <clears throat> The Empire are the better than the bad guys. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. It's really uh, all I have to say. Until next time, hope you all have a good day, a good weekend, a good week. 
see you later.